When you grow up watching 80s science fiction shows, all you want is a computer similar to the one powering the Enterprise spaceship. But back then, that technology seemed so far away and impossible to achieve in my lifetime. I think that that's why it's beyond my belief that we are engaging in conversations with virtual assistants and asking existential questions to ChatGPT. This Apple II arrived here pretty dead, and although I don't have any training in electronics, soldiering, or any of the skills I needed to fix it, I did it. I learned everything along the way, and Evernote helped me a lot, but today's video is not about Evernote. In reality, this project was only possible because of the community, and now I feel the obligation to help others by sharing everything I learned and all my mistakes. There's no reason for this project other than to have fun and to remember the first time I interacted with my own computer back in the 80s. It was an Apple II Plus. It's pretty easy to take this apart. All you have to do is remove the screws. There are several here. This other ones here, they hold the power supply unit. I'm not gonna remove them now. This switch is only present on the European versions of the computer. This is to switch between the US and in this case, the German keyboard. With this, this board is in such a good condition. I have to stop a little bit and have a conversation with my past self. The board is actually in good condition, but little did I know about all the problems this computer had. The list is unbelievably long, <laughs> but I don't regret it. I learned a lot, like I said before. Take a look at this connection here. This is something that sometimes gets broken because when you plug the cable there you tend to turn it around like this and all this moves this is in perfect condition if for some reason the video is not working well on your apple II, just check this little metal part here okay let's talk about my first mistake there are two capacitors inside the power supply unit on the Apple II computers, Apple II, 2E computers. They are called HIFA capacitors and they have to be replaced. If you don't replace them, they may blow and the liquid that comes out of it will, yeah, may damage the power supply unit board and that's a mess to clean. I didn't want that to happen, so I didn't turn on the computer. I started by cleaning it, and after that, my plan was to replace these two capacitors. In hindsight, I wish I had turned the computer on at least for a couple of moments, filmed that to know if it was working, if the keyboard was working. You soon understand why I should have done that. Okay, let's clean this. I first removed the power supply, Again, all you have to do is remove these four screws, and now you have easy access to all the other parts. I was being very careful here, but unfortunately, many of these tabs broke. The plastic was so brutal, but that's okay. I'm already trying some ideas, and this, of course, will be another project for the future. This is what I always do, I take pictures of all the cables, how they are connected, and also the keyboard layout. But check this. <laughs> Disassembling this computer is straightforward. All you have to do is unscrew everything. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> There's only one point of attention. To completely remove the board, you also have to squeeze these little posts. And as you can see by how many are broken on my board, Someone has been here before. The speaker is held with these two metal tabs that are pretty easy to remove and also to put back.
Next, it was time to clean the keyboard. Removing the caps is pretty easy. You don't even need a two. Uh, but little did I know here as well. This keyboard deserves an entire video. I took this keyboard apart so many times. So stay tuned. There will be a keyboard video. Wow, much better now. Look at this board. I definitely was postponing it, but it had to be done. It was time to address the power supply capacitors. I'm not sure you can see it, but there are some cracks here. Soldering the capacitors was my first time soldering. It doesn't look good and I'm not showing it, but there are many good tutorials, good videos on YouTube, and you'll find the link in the description below if you want to learn how to do it. It's working and that's what matters, right? <laughs> However, this was the day when many of my disappointments with this project began. Disappointments will always happen in many of our projects and in life in general. And the solution here is take a break. We have to let our brain do its thing. It will keep working in the background, but that will only work if we stop working. And you don't have to st stop everything. You can move to another project. It works. <laughs> work, work, work. <laughs> it works. Here's what happened. Uh, the minutes you watched so far, they were weeks, many weeks in real life. And remember, I didn't turn on the computer when I got it. I was desperate to turn it on to see it working. But first, I had to check if everything was correct on the power supply. I had to check the voltage. Unfortunately, it wasn't. I'll explain it in a future video, but it took me a long time to understand what was happening. Here's where I should have taken that break. I didn't. I kept working, kept working, kept working. And when I finally figured it out, all I wanted to do was turn on the computer. Yeah, I should have taken that break. Let's talk about my second mistake on this project. When I turned it on the computer, I wasn't filming it. Even if you're not planning to do a video or publish anything, you should film some moments on a restoration like this. There are many things that can go wrong and your eyes cannot keep track of everything. So a camera pointing to the board would be the best thing to do, but I didn't. I just turned the computer on and unfortunately I didn't hear the typical that you should hear when you turn on a computer like this. And worse, smoke came from the board in different points. Different points is the key to the problem here. I saw it, but not the precise point where it happened. This little guy made my life very difficult for several weeks. But this is a story for another video. Meanwhile, I suggest you watch this other video to learn how Evernote helped me keep track of everything on this project. And if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. But if you want to help even more, please consider joining my Patreon or becoming a YouTube member. Thanks for watching. See you soon.